Yo, he's an actor, a playwright, a poet. He's a won award upon award, a Spike Lee movie. Yo, he's done a lot of dope things. I'm gonna let him come up here and let his work speak for itself. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage, Carlos Andres. It's always great when someone can introduce me and say my name correctly. Give it up for that. Carlos Andres Gomez, a Latino. I love it, it's very rare. Give it up for Ocean, Vong, and Sarah Kay. In my dream world, they would always be reading poems. 24 hours a day, the two of them. Oh, I love y'all so much. Oh. Okay, so all the work I'm doing tonight, I'm doing a Brett. You're gonna be the first one to hear all these pieces. How does that sound? The first one to hear it's all new shit, okay? Nothing older than two weeks, and one poem will be younger than 10 seconds old. Okay? So this first piece was inspired last week uh, by, by a phenomenon I've been seeing a lot, and uh, inspired by a true story. The name of this poem is called Traveling and Broke. And this is for the white gentleman in Union Square, panhandling with that sign. It's a poem in multiple parts. One. Correction. His sign actually read traveling coast to coast and broke, too. Where are you going? This has become an epidemic. White people without any money suddenly catching the travel itch. If you are broke, why are you traveling? <laughs> New York is a long way from the Pacific Coast. Maybe this is a good time to reconsider. It's like holding up a sign that says, Need boyfriend, bad drug habit, trying for a baby. <laughs> okay, maybe not exactly with the baby thing, but you get my point. Even if it's just travel, am I expected to enable this behavior? Three, I have a passionate desire to visit Tahiti right now. But if I decided to actually try doing it, I would probably go broke. So I don't. Four, I've never seen a Jamaican or Mexican guy holding a sign that says traveling and broke. They usually hustle bootleg CDs, or sell hand-printed t-shirts, or dress up in mariachi outfits and sing love songs to the homes they will never see again. Love songs that stuff envelopes full of $1 bills that are mailed home in the shaking arms of letters. They use as make-believe silver spoons for dreams and the good life. Usually written from the dungeons of shanty towns and the cramped hallways of shelters. Five. Besides travel, I've noticed that a lot of white people asking for change also like dogs. Usually a gold retriever or a collie. You know, a friendly companion to help pass the time. When I was an outreach worker in the South Bronx, I never once met a homeless person with a dog or anyone with an incurable case of the travel bug or anyone with a coast-to-coast -coast travel itinerary minus a plan. Six, until I tell people my name, I am reminded every day that this world was built for my face. The salivating whim of my wanderlust. It almost makes me want to start a band. I travel the open road. Just live, you know? Seven. The truest definition of a hippie is a person from an affluent background who rejects his or her privilege, choosing a bohemian lifestyle instead. The key term in all of this is the word choosing. Anyone can play homeless with a trust fund waiting back at their house. But a face is a face. Even when tattooed and scarred, the loaded symbol is hard to obscure. A face gets phone calls and better tips. A face gets four more minutes and three more answered questions with a family doctor. A face 
is why when I walk home late at night in bed with my hoodie on, the police car speeds off when it creeps up close enough to see what I look like. Seven, it is easy to walk past faces different than your own and convince yourself that their choices led them to where they are. Easy to justify their suffering or drug-addicted slump. But when you see your own face, mirrored on a happy-go-lucky grin, tangled straw-colored dreadlocks, a napping lassie look-alike on a leash and a Jack Kerouac dream to tackle the open road, maybe make it to California with a dime bag full of luck and a healthy dose of public charity. I mean, who can't relate to that? You gotta throw at least a quarter in that hat, right? Huh. Yeah, you feel that? That's a, that's a good feeling in the room. Everyone's like, ooh. Uh? <laughs> Fuck you, Carlos. <laughs> That's good. That's that's a that's a good moment right there. This is what we're gonna do. This is what we're gonna do. Like how, do, Eric Carlos? How do you do a pull less than ten seconds solo? How's that possible? Like that's crazy. I feel like you get to a point where you're like, fuck. You want to be so safe and like so. Like, okay, I got all my shit worked out. Like no, to me, I'm like we gotta take risks, right? I mean, like ocean yeah. bomb Sarah K type fucking risks. You know what I'm talking about? So here's I've done I've done so much time, so I'm gonna try. You know, it could be really amazing. It could be awesome. I'm just gonna make up a poem. Does that sound cool? And uh, here's the thing I'm gonna decide. Some, I do different things. Sometimes I'll take words. Some, sometimes I'll do like this uh, thing that Damien Rice does where he does freestyle songs on concerts. So I'll do a, a color, a body part, and an emotion. Um, I'm gonna let Ocean make up the rules. We haven't even talked about it. What are the rules of my poem? Just tell me, Ocean. You're, you're a brilliant writer. Say anything. I say color, body part, and emotion. Come up with three random things and, I'll, and that'll give people some constraints for things people will throw out to me. Or throw one to me, throw one to me. It has to do with loss. Has to do with what? Loss. Loss, perfect. Okay, cool. Mr. K, give me something that's going to be a const Give me another thing that I have to put in my poem. Has to do with love. Has to do with love. Loss and love. Okay, cool. And Adrian, you're going to be the last part of this poem. Just th th throw some crazy word out there. Just throw anything you a want out there. A fruit. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, okay, okay. A fruit. A fruit. Okay, okay. A fruit, loss, and love. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. All right. It goes like this. This is called, uh, Untitled. <laughs> okay. All right. If this world were everything I wanted it to be, it would be the salt water drifting out of my mouth off the coast of Monte Cristi in La República Dominicana. A fresh mango. The strains tangled up in my teeth. It's slipping from my hands before I'd suck the seed dry. That's how I feel with you, baby. When I fall in your arms at the end of each day, I want to suck every last bit out of your body. Literally and figuratively. <laughs> then bury myself in the calm, delicate cemetery of your chest, the one place I can sleep without the insomnia of my ever-running mind. There is a moment in every night just before you fall asleep where your body twitches and shakes as if it is fighting with me to drag me into the canopy of my being down in our bed, a place I want to be buried and never leave with you like a mango seed falling into the water. <laughs>